Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be having a look at the brand new Acetech SimSports Forte wheelbase. Now this is Acetech's mid-range direct drive wheelbase. So they're going to have three. There's going to be the La Prima, which is the entry level, which is only available as a bundle. That is 12 newton meters. The Forte, which we're going to look at today, which is 18 newton meters. And their flagship, which is the Invicta, which is 27 newton meters. So this sits right in the middle now a couple of weeks ago we had a look at the invicta wheelbase the 27 newton meter monster and hands down that is the best wheelbase that i have ever used but the forte isn't as good as the invicta but it's better all will become clear but before we get into the video the necessary disclaimer acetech sim sports sent me this wheelbase for free so i didn't pay for it although they don't get to see this video before it's published nor do they have any input at all on production. And also, I will say that I'm not a product reviewer. That's not what I do. I am a sim racer, exactly the same as you. And that's the opinion that you're going to get. So when I test a product, I look at it as if I'm going to buy it with my own money. And there are only really four things that I'm interested in. Firstly, how does it look? If it doesn't look right, well, I'm not going to buy it. Secondly, what's the build quality like and general feel? Thirdly, how does it perform? And finally, is it value for money? So firstly, we'll talk about looks. And I mentioned this when I talked about the Invicta wheelbase. I think these are really, really good looking wheelbases. There's no reason at all that manufacturers can't make their direct drive wheelbases or any wheelbases look aesthetically pleasing. And I think this does. It's really elegant, sleek, contemporary, and it's full of RGBs. So looks wise, it gets a massive thumbs up from me build quality and general feel is exceptional there is absolutely nothing wrong with it everything is perfect i've got absolutely no complaints at all so before we talk about performance let's just jump into the software and we'll have a quick look so this is race hub this is the software that is used for all the acetech peripherals now here on the left hand side you can see we have the steering wheel connected and the wheelbase. We don't currently have the Acetec pedals installed. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the steering wheel. We'll just click on wheelbase and here's all your settings. So you can see there, there's a graphical representation of the wheel where you can set the center. But all the settings are in here, torque. Now, I like the way that they've simplified this. I looked at this software when I looked at the Invicta and I'm just briefly going to go over it now. But everything is really clear and easy to understand. If you hover over something, it tells you what it does. Absolutely brilliant, really simple. So you can have the basic version or you can have the advanced version. Um, dead easy to use, really simple. Now there's one thing on here that we'll talk about when we get into the simulator, the torque acceleration limit. This is the slew rate. This can be adjusted up and down to your heart's content. But this one has a slew rate of 6.7 newton meters per millisecond. Up the top here, we have LEDs, so we can configure the color of the LEDs on the wheelbase. You'll see this one only has the LEDs on the top, not at the bottom like the Invicta. That's how they save money. The rest of it is exactly the same materials. You're just not going to get as many LEDs. But you can change that to whichever color you want. I have a nice blue. Safety. We've got some warnings in there and notifications on. Really, really simple piece of software. Really functional. I like it a lot. So here we are then at Sebring in the Porsche 992 Cup car on iRacing. Probably one of the best combinations for testing any wheelbase just because of the nature of the track and it being so bumpy and detailed. Now, before we actually take it on track, there's a couple of things that I want to go over. Somebody mentioned in the comments when I looked at the Invicta wheelbase about mounting and I thank him for mentioning that because it reminded me to mention it in this video. So we'll just take the wheel off real quick. And here you can see we have the Forte wheelbase and the Acetec front mount. Now it may look on the face of it that this is your regular style mount for any front mount of a modern direct drive wheel such as a VRS base or a semi cube but that's not the case this here is just a front cover this is a plastic cover you remove this and actually the mounting is behind there and they are slightly 
offset. So you can't use your regular front mount with an Acetec wheelbase. So bear that in mind. If you do want to front mount it, well, you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket and buy one of the Acetec front mounts. Although I will say that the front mount from Acetec is really nice. And as you can see there, we have the integrated emergency stop and the power button. Now these buttons here come in a, an enclosure from Acetec that come with the wheelbase. And to put them on here, you remove them from the enclosure. It comes with like a small tool, a special spanner to be able to tighten it up behind here. And you mount them here. Now, there are some exposed wires behind. Not exposed wires, but they don't have a plastic cover on the back. So that bothers some people. It doesn't actually bother me in the slightest because I'm not rummaging around here at all. But it's really nice having these integrated into the front mount. So you can see there, if we press that, that will disable the force feedback and this button flashes. Well, I can actually just turn the whole thing off there and it will shut down to fire it up. Just press that button and there we go. So that'll go a bit crazy without the wheel on. Just press that, it stops the force feedback. And there we go. So this obviously transfers power and data through this quick release on the Acetec wheel and wheelbase. Brilliant, brilliant solution. I absolutely love it. And there we go, flashing so there's no force feedback. Press that and away, we're ready to go. So we'll take it out on track. So I've been using this wheelbase, the Forte wheelbase for about two weeks now. So if you follow the channel, any race that I've done in the last couple of weeks has been done on the Forte wheelbase. Prior to this, I had the Acetec Invicta wheelbase on but prior to that, I've been running a Simicube 2 Pro for quite a long time. And on my rig to my right hand side right now, I've got the Simicube 2 Sport. So I know the differences between the wheelbases and, and how they feel. Now, I want to talk about numbers and specifically slew rate. Now, Acetec provided me with some information about slew rates that they had tested at their headquarters. Now, they gave me some numbers for the Forte which we're using now and the Invicta wheelbase which we previously tested but they also give me some numbers for the Simicube 2 Pro now Acetec tested this wheelbase the Forte wheelbase this is the 18 newton meter wheelbase and the slew rate for this was 6.7 newton meters per millisecond so what is slew rate well that's the amount of torque that can be transferred in a specific period of time namely one millisecond so this is 6.7 newton meters per millisecond and the higher the number essentially the more responsive the wheelbase is now the Acetec Invicta wheelbase that we've previously tested their flagship model the 27 newton meter wheelbase that is 9.4 newton meters per millisecond so 2.7 newton meters more than this one so essentially a bit more responsive they also tested the Simicube 2 Pro at their headquarters at Acetec now Simicube 2 say that their slew rate for their Pro version of their wheelbase is 8 newton meters per millisecond Acetec tested it and it was actually 6.3 newton meters per millisecond I wasn't there when the testing was done I don't know how it was done so I'm taking that with a grain of salt. But I can't see Acetec throwing a number out there if they haven't tested it exactly the same way that they've tested this wheelbase and the Invicta. So I think that holds weight. So I don't know if Simicube test it in a slightly different way. I've no idea. Uh, for context, the Simicube 2 Sport, I believe, is quoted at being 4.8 newton meters per millisecond. So if the same testing is done with that one well i would say that if acetec tested the sport well that would be lower than 4.8 newton meters per millisecond but i don't know how the testing was done i wasn't present i've no idea but the numbers quoted by acetec don't surprise me one little bit the invicta wheelbase which we've already looked at felt much more responsive than my simicube 2 pro as does this wheelbase. This is the Forte wheelbase, Acetec's mid-range wheelbase. So 
there's going to be the La Prima, there's going to be the Forte, which is this one, and the Invicta. This is their mid-range wheelbase. And this feels more responsive than my Simicube 2 Pro, which I was really surprised at. I didn't think this wheelbase would be as good. I really didn't. But their numbers quoted by Acetec, I wasn't there, so read into that what you will. So we'll talk about force feedback. So I've used this for a couple of weeks now, and I found the force feedback to be absolutely tremendous. Really, really good. Um, obviously, when you lose traction at the rear end, you can feel it massively. But I was quite surprised just how much I can actually feel the front end when I start to lose traction. And I don't think I was looking for that specifically when I was using the Invicta wheelbase. I paid more attention to it with this wheelbase, the differences between this and the Invicta, because obviously I want to be able to tell you guys which one I would recommend. And I don't want you to have to spend top dollar for the flagship wheelbase if you don't need to. But I found the force feedback at the front of the car and the rear of the car absolutely brilliant. The detail in the force feedback is incredible. Like, really, really good. So detailed. Like, I'll try and demonstrate that when we get on the straight and try and show you the detail that comes through the steering wheel just when we're driving in a straight line. So I'll hold the wheelbase. You know, I'm, I'm not holding this. Any movements you can see on the wheelbase now that's just detail in the track surface and obviously when you hold onto the wheelbase god i nearly missed my braking marker then obviously when you hold onto the wheelbase that's transferred through to you so you can feel exactly what the car's doing i'll try and do it again here so any any movement that's just the road surface unbelievable really really good curbs Super strong force feedback when you go over the curves, as you would expect. And on the on the sand and as you can see there. Nearly took my fingers off. Don't do that, kids. So yeah, this is 18 newton meters. And I've said to people before that if the peak output of the wheelbase is your primary reason for buying a new wheelbase so if, if you wanted 30 newton meters from a Simicube 2 ultimate or 27 newton meters from the acetec invicta you're a maniac nobody's going to be running force feedback at that level this is 18 newton meters and i don't have this anywhere near 100 percent anywhere near 100 percent i have it set to 100 percent in the software but in the, in the simulator, it's nowhere near what I could run it at. Uh, see if I can actually up the force feedback a bit now. So just give you some context where we are with the force feedback. So at 8.8, .8, the force feedback strength on iRacing. 38.5 newton meters. So we'll just up that a bit there. So 11.3. Yeah, vibrations are a bit stronger. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of weight to the wheel now. No clipping at all. Sorry, I should have put that little overlay on screen so you could see the force feedback. And show you that again now with the detail. Quite a smooth, smooth part of the track this one actually. The sun's gone down quite quickly in one lap. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of force there. I wouldn't run my force feedback anywhere near that. No way. Definitely not. I'll put that back there before I forget. 8.8 .8 it was. There we go. 8.8. .8. So yeah, to summarise, the force feedback from this wheelbase is super, super detailed, but plenty strong enough if you wanted to give yourself a workout. Slew rates, well, as I mentioned... Who knows who's measuring what, where, and when. But I've got absolutely no reason to disbelieve anything that Acer Tech Simsports say. They, they are quite transparent. 
in whatever they do, it would seem. So performance wise, it's absolutely exceptional. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said that the Acer Tech Invicta wheelbase was the best wheelbase that I'd ever used. And I said that this one was somehow better. And I think it is because this is a bit cheaper and I can't ever see me needing any more power than what this Forte wheelbase can put out. I just think bang for buck, this can't be beaten. So talking about bang for buck, let's talk about cost. So for this wheelbase, it's 882 euros plus VAT. That's expensive. In the UK, by the time you've paid your VAT and shipping, you're over a thousand euros. Is it value for money? Absolutely, hands down. People might look at the Acer Tech wheelbases and look at the quick release and think, oh, I'm gonna be limited with what wheels that I can use. Well, I've got the Acer Tech mechanical quick release on this grid MPX steering wheel and it works flawlessly. Yes, it's got a USB cable attached, but that's just the same case if you have a SemiCube or VRS, anything like that. So don't let the Acer Tech quick release or the thought of having to use the Acer Tech rim put you off. You really don't. I'm using that and it's fine. So let's summarize. So firstly, how does it look? I think it looks brilliant. Like I mentioned a few times, there's no reason why manufacturers can't make their wheelbases look as good as this. And it's got customizable RGBs. What more could you want? What's the build quality like in general feel? This feels like a quality product. From front to back, everything is finished beautifully. It does genuinely feel like a quality product. Performance, well, you're not gonna be surprised when I say that it performs brilliantly, like really good. Outperforms my SimiCube 2 Pro, outperforms my SimiCube 2 Sport. I have literally got no complaints at all regarding performance. Value for money, well, as always, that is subjective. It depends how deep your pockets are. In the UK, if you buy this, including VAT and shipping, it's gonna cost you north of a thousand euros. And let's be realistic, that's expensive. But would I buy one? 100%, 100%. This outperforms my SimiCube 2 Pro. And if Acer Tech turned around and said they want this back, well, I would quite happily buy one of these with my own money. I don't know if I would spend the extra to buy the Invicta. I don't know if I need the extra performance. I think this one would be the perfect wheelbase. So I want to say a massive thank you to Acer Tech Sim Sports for sending me these two wheelbases to test and use. Now, I am not a partner of Acer Tech Sim Sports. They have never given me one single penny, despite what some people say in the comments. I have never had a penny of Acer Tech and would never take any money to look at any product anywhere under any circumstances. That being said though, I have got an affiliate link with Acer Tech Sim Sports. So if you buy one of these using that affiliate link, I will get a small commission. Although I will leave two links in the video description. One will be the affiliate link. One will be a normal bog standard link. And if you use that one, I won't get a penny. Use whichever one you feel most comfortable with. But the Acer Tech Forte gets a massive thumbs up from me. It is brilliant. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great week. See you later. Cheers.